In this presentation, we're going to take a look at the closing entry process within our accounting system. Get ready, because here we go with zero. Here we are in our not-for-profit organization dashboard. We're going to jump on over to Excel to see what our objective will be. We're in tab 10, number 10 over here in our Excel worksheet. You'll recall we have up top, if we go all the way up top, we entered our transactions up here into this top trial balance. Then we took the ending balance numbers and I moved them to the beginning balance numbers in the second trial balance so that we can do our allocation within a trial balance format from the expenses by nature to the expenses, expenses by function. We don't need to do that in zero, but you can think of it conceptually how it would be kind of difficult to do this on a you know, two-dimensional like Excel worksheet. How would you do it here versus the zero, the tools we have there uh, using the classification, making it much easier. And then we're going to go down to the this next trial balance worksheet again taking the ending balance numbers here so that we could see the the ending balance numbers and in, in, in this format and then do the closing process this is what we would do and like again in excel so that we we can see the the closing process and what that would be from a journal entry standpoint so then those are the, going to be the beginning numbers then we'll do our closing process. So in a for-profit type of organization, closing process is going to be much the same, very similar. And just note that you have a similar kind of problem with different, just depends on the type of entity you're talking about. Some things are going to be the same with the closing process. Some things will be different. Generally, the closing process means that the temporary accounts, income statement accounts, in other words, profit and loss accounts, income and expense type of accounts, will be closed out at the end of the time period, in this case, the end of the month, to the equity accounts, or in this case, the net asset type of accounts, just different name for the not-for-profit organization. So at the end of the day, what do we expect to see? Only balance sheet accounts or permanent accounts, income statement accounts or statement of activity accounts, income and expense accounts being zeroed out and then being closed into the equity section. And then of course, we're still in balance. Now in a for-profit type of organization, uh, we, we, the, the problems with a for-profit really depend on the type of entity. If it's a sole proprietor, pretty straightforward transaction because you only have one equity account. So when you think about the equity as a whole, uh, it's pretty much the same, but then it'll differ by entity. If you have a partnership, then you might have the profit sharing could be different by the partners. And then you got a problem of having two equity accounts at least or more that you'll have to allocate the income to in accordance with the profit sharing agreement. And that's a pain for, you know, the closing process. That's the that's the <laughs> the tweak in the in the system of the closing process. And then the corporation's actually a little bit easier than a partnership because because all the stocks are basically the same, but it still can look kind of confusing because then you're going to have the investment, which is basically the common stock that are in there, versus the retained earnings, which is what you roll over into. And every but the closing process is easy because it all rolls into the retained earnings account. So that's going to be that. And then with a with a not for profit. It's all going to roll over, but now we have at least these two accounts up top, and that's going to be the net assets with restrictions and those without restrictions. Why is this important? Because you'll recall the net assets here represent assets minus liabilities or the book value of the, of the organization. This is the money or the net value of the organization. In other words, this is what people that are part of the organization are going to want to try to be spending. <laughs> they're going to, this is what people are going to be arguing over how they're going to use this money in what way or, or another. So what we want to say, hey, look, we, of this equity section, we have to be able to tell people to say, hey, look, this portion of it is restricted. It has a restriction to it. And therefore, you have to when you start, you know, thinking about and, you know, kind of arguing about what you're going <laughs> to what you're going to spend it on. It's going to have to be in the, uh, you know, the area of these restrictions because it's restricted and this money is not restricted. And therefore, you know, we have a much broader debate. You know, we could have a broader debate on what to do with that money. So we have to have that restriction. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to close these, these accounts into the equity section, but, but you'll recall that when we set up these accounts in a trial balance format, we have the, the restricted items here donut, you know, that we have as restricted versus not restricted. So anything that says restricted, basically we're going to be put it into the restricted item. Anything that's not, that doesn't say anything, like all the expenses are, are going to be assumed to be non-restricted. In other words, if we spent it, then obviously, then it must not have been restricted or we must have released it from restriction. So any expense account must have been released from restriction or resulted in something being released from restriction and therefore it's gonna be an unrestricted item. So any revenue that we got that was restricted, then we're gonna to have to put into the restricted category, roll it over into restricted net income. 
I won't go into the journal entries, but if you want to think about the journal entries, you can over here. Within zero, it'll do this for us, basically. However, it won't do it completely right because it can roll over the net income to the equity section depending on our year end. It won't do it till the year end, but we can do it basically at the year end. It'll roll over the income to the equity section. However, it won't break out properly between restricted and unrestricted necessarily, and that's what we have to go in and make an adjustment for. All right, so let's say what that looks like. If I go back over to zero then, let's open up our reports over here. So we're gonna to go to the accounting dropdown. I'm gonna be opening up uh, the standard reports. Let's open up the balance sheet. Let's open up the income statement and then our worksheet report. So we'll open up the balance sheet, changing the date. I'm gonna select the date and let's bring it down to 2000 or bring it out to 2020. I'm gonna bring it to the end of January. Then I'm gonna go right up top again, right click on that tab, duplicate that tab, go back to the tab to the left. Then I'm gonna select the accounting dropdown. We wanna open the income statement. So then let's open the income statement. And then I'm gonna keep that open. I'm gonna go back up top, right click on the tab again, duplicate this tab, go back to the tab to the left. Now let's open up our worksheet. So I'm gonna hit the dropdown. I'm gonna to go to the income statement worksheet now. Let's open the income statement worksheet. There is our income statement worksheet. Now let's go back to our balance sheet. So we're gonna go back to our balance sheet. Let's see what Zero does for us and what we need to do uh, to help us out within Zero. So within our balance sheet, we're concentrating down here on the equity section. Within the equity section, you'll note that it says current year earnings because that's what Zero does to basically tell us that the earnings are tying into the income statement. That's not really what we want because we're gonna to have to break that out to two, two different components. We would like to see the equity section and we can't even really change that. And this isn't zero only, this is how other accounting software uh, of a similar nature will be working. We can't really change that, that number because it's not actually an account. So, uh, so we'll, we'll see what we could do with that. But just note that, uh, first of all, that 278,900 is gonna tie out to the income statement. So if I go to the income statement, there's the net, net income, the 278,900. So that's how the income statement ties out to the balance sheet, going back to the balance sheet. There's no other account at this point in time because this is our first month of operations. So we have nothing else happening. And note that it'll stay there no matter what we do really until we roll over the year. So at the, at the end of the year, it'll automatically roll over given the fact that we're indicating that we're a, a, year, a fiscal year end. So let's see what that looks like. I'm gonna go back up top. I'm going to select the drop down. I'm just going to bring this out to 2021, even though there's no other data in it and see the effect on the equity section. So if I bring this out to say 2021, the end of 2021 or close to it for January in January, 2021 or close to it, scrolling down, then it's now called retained earnings. So it's now called retained earnings. Now, uh, that's retained earnings is what we expect to, to or that would be for a corporation what we would name it for a corporation it's doing what we want but one it's not naming the account correctly and two it's not breaking out between the two equity accounts we need which are going to be the net assets with and without restrictions so what we could do then is we can rename this retained earnings account to be the unrestricted account then we can make an, an adjusting entry to break out the um portion of this account that uh, that is going to be restricted so we're going to have to make an adjusting entry to break out the restricted portion now how would we how would we know to do that well i'm not going to go to our excel worksheet we could say okay if i go over to the the income statement here's our income statement net income and then if i go to my income statement worksheet here's our income statement worksheet now this is the net income once again obviously the the total of the of the worksheet should be our net income so the net income of the 278,900 tying out to the net income over here of the 278,900. So back to the Excel worksheet. And then we're going to break out that, that amount between the unrestricted and the restricted. So if we just leave it alone, we're going to rename uh, retained earnings and have everything, the 279, uh, 278,900 roll into retained earnings, which we will then recalculate as, uh, unrest as the unrestricted portion of the of the net assets then we'll make an adjustment to break out the restricted portion so that's going to be our objective let's take a look at it let's first uh, right click on this tab again duplicate this tab so we have something to work with I'm then going to work with the tab all the way to the left then we're going to go into our chart of accounts so I'm going to select the accounting drop down up top we're going to look all the way down at the bottom to the chart of accounts notice it's not well there it is chart of accounts if it's not there it's because I'm zoomed in 
So if there's any problems, you want to zoom out uh, so you can get down there. Now, we could go down to the equity section in all accounts, or I could just simply choose equity. Obviously, equity is a name for a for-profit type of organization. We call like net assets here, but they're equity type of accounts, and that's fine. No problem. We can work with that. Now, this net uh, retained earnings, we'd like to call it a different name. Notice it says not used because this is the account that it rolls that we roll over income to. But we'd like to rename it. So I'm going to edit it. And I'm going to say this is going to be called uh, net. Let's say net assets. Unre Actually, this is going to be the account type, which I, I don't want to change. I'm going to close this back out again. And let's do it again so I don't mess it up. I'm going to go back in here. And then I want to change the name down here. So the name is going to be net assets uh, and I'll say unrestricted. All right, net assets unrestricted. Then I'm going to say save. So we'll save that. So net assets unrestricted. Now, if I go to the balance sheet, I go to the balance sheet and notice I, again, I'm a, I'm a year out. I'm in 2021. I'm going to update this report and then scroll back down and it, it'll roll over into net assets. Now, note that it's not there yet because it's currently in the current year, it's going to be a net income. So we still have that kind of issue here. But in essence, there it is. It's going to roll out to the to the unrestricted uh, after one, once it does the rollout process. All right. Then if I go back to the first tab, we're going to need another account that, that we're going to say is the net assets that will be the restricted portion that we're going to have to make an adjustment for. So I'm going to make another account. Then I'm going to say that uh, we then need to add an account. So we're going to add an account. It's going to be an equity type of account, so not an equity type of account. And the code that we will make, I guess, should be uh, three. Well, I don't know. What should the code be? If I pull this on over a bit, this is going to be the retained earnings is the three nine. So let's put it three nine, three nine one zero. And this is going to be the net assets restricted net assets restricted and then i'm going to say save that so there we have it so there's the unrestricted and restricted that looks good so now we need to make a journal entry and what we're going to do is say okay on the balance sheet over here we see it's all going to roll out into unrestricted so i need to take the portion out that is restricted reduce this amount by the portion that's restricted and put it into the restricted category how do I do that? Well, if I go to the worksheet here, here's the amount in this column that's restricted. Bottom line is going to be that that 234,656. So 234,656. Let's go back to the first tab to do that. We're going to go into our journal entry, go to the accounting up top. We're going to go into our reports. I'm looking for basically the, the journal entry portion now. I'm going to scroll down to the general journal or the general uh, report. We will then add a new journal. So we're going to say add new journal. So another journal entry that we're going to have here. Now this is a closing entry. So I'll make it as of the end of the time period. So I'm going to say closing entry at the end of the month. So it's going to be the end of January. So I'll bring this back to January. If I can, it won't let me click on it. It's being stubborn. There it goes. January 31st. Then we're going to go down to our description down here. It's going to be closing entry. And then we're going to have the closing entry. Now, these are going to be our equity account. So if I select the equity account, we're going to start with the debit. Debit should be decreasing an equity account. So we need to decrease the equity account. I'm going to go down to the accounts we have set up here. We're going to be decreasing the unrestricted item and putting it into the restricted item. So I'm going to say unrestricted item. It's going to be decreasing. We shouldn't need unrestricted or restricted categorization because this is going to be for um, not an income statement, but balance sheet account. Then if I go to my worksheet, the worksheet here, scrolling down, look at the restricted column. The number we need to pick up is going to be that uh, 234656, 234656, 234656, 234656, 234656, right there. And then closing entry on the other side, also going to be an equity account. We're going to go to the net assets, but this time the restricted ones. So we're going to be in the net assets or equity section restricted. This will be increasing the equity section for, for the restricted items because, again, it's a credit balance account. 
If you got the credits and debits mixed up, that's okay. You could record it and then you can change it if it's going the wrong way, right? So what's this going to be doing? It's going to be decreasing the net assets that are unrestricted, increasing the net assets restricted. Let's go ahead and post that and then check it out. So we're going to post it. Hopefully we get a green thing up top. There's a green thing. So that means that we didn't haven't done anything horribly wrong or maybe even done something right. And then we're on the balance sheet. Let's go ahead and update the balance sheet. Now I'm out in 2021, so that's good. I, I mean, <laughs> that's not the current year that we're in, but that's gonna mean that when we look at the equity section, it will have rolled over retained earnings already. So if we go down, it's, it's rolled over two retained earnings, which we recategorized retained earnings into unrestricted. So there's the unrestricted items. And then we took the amount out of unrestricted that was restricted and applied it here. In other words, if we go into this 44, uh, 244 then and scroll down, uh, we, that won't give us the data because that's the amount it rolled over into. So let's go, actually, if I change the date up top, let's change the date and bring this back to uh, January of, or back before January, let's say 2019 and update this report. So then we see our adjustment for the manual entry for 2020. So this is the adjustment that we made and here's the total profit for 2020. So this total profit is the net profit. This was rolling over automatically. And then we took this amount out of it by with a journal entry to bring it down to the 44 to 44. All right, let's scroll back up. Let's go back to our, uh, our balance sheet. So back to the balance sheet. And then if we scroll on down, this other side here is just is just with a journal entry. So it's not going to show any rollover. So remember, everything rolls over into this account. Then we take the rest I'm sorry, this one up here is the one that is just a journal entry. The one that was unrestricted includes the rollover and then the journal entry out. So this one was retained earning every net. All the net income rolls in at the end of the year. And then we take the amount out of the unrestricted, which was the retained earnings and put it into the restricted item here. So now if we take a look at these two amounts, the 234,656, if our income statement worksheet, so within our income statement worksheet, we have the unrestricted and the restricted columns. So the unrestricted, there's the 234,656, there's the, uh, and going back to the balance sheet, 234,656, the 44,244, back to our worksheet, there's the, the 44,244 as well. So you can see those two items broken out. Now, if we go back over here, note that this is all only one month of operation. Uh, if you wanted these two items to, to be tying into the, the uh, income statement or the worksheet, if we go back over to our worksheet, for example, and we, we want to say, how much should the restricted items be if I had more than one month of operation? We would have to run this worksheet for the life of, of the restricted items. So we would just change the dates up top. So in other words, this will tie out to the income statement if we run the same date range here. If we want to run it for the life to see what should be on the balance sheet if there were multiple periods, then we would have to run it for you know the life of the organization of the life of the restricted items. And then it should show the proper amount in the balance sheet uh, type of item. Okay, so then if we go back to the balance sheet, also note we have this problem that we're actually in 2021. What if I bring it back to the current period which is January 2020th. So if I bring this on back and say, all right, well, let's bring it back to January. Oh, that was way too far. So we're going to bring it up now to January 31st, 2020. Update that report. Then we'll scroll back down. And, and so now we've got these three numbers here. We've got the current earnings, that 278,900. If we go to the normal income statement, that's going to be the, the total earnings. So the total earnings are over here. If we go back to the balance sheet. Uh, so notice that those earnings are going to roll into what used to be the retained earnings, which is now unrestricted. So unrestricted is the account that those will, will roll into. Now, we, we can't run the report as of this date because it's, I mean, it, well, it won't be rolled over as of this date. So note that this is one area and it's not just zero that has this kind of issue. Most of the softwares have this kind of thing where they, they have the current earnings broken out instead of putting them into the retained earnings. This is not an account yet, right? So that we can't really adjust it with a journal entry. So what, what we would have to do is adjust this if we want to format it and, to, and let the reader know that, hey, look, the current earnings and the unrestricted, that's what represents the, uh, the unrestricted net assets. So the unrestricted net assets are going to be the 278,900 minus the 234,656. 
that's what you can argue over what what to spend most on right and then the and then the restricted items are going to be the items that uh, are are restricted at this point now if we want to format this a little bit more nicely we could then go to the when we uh, make the the uh, excel sheet we can tie these two things together we can also go to the editing tool here and see what we could do with regards to the editing tool for external formatting so if i was to to scroll down on the editing tool and see what we have yeah, let's see what we have down here in the equity section. So notice we have current year earnings here, and we also have the net assets uh, unrestricted. So we could group those two together, which is very nice. So I could I can highlight those two and say, hey, let's make a group of those two, and let's call that uh, let's call that then. So we'll go up top and we'll say this is net assets uh, unrestricted restricted so there we have it and then let's go ahead and save that and then I'm gonna minimize this column and see if we could put those together which is great because that's something again this tool is something that you don't normally see you have more flexibility with it uh, if you if you were talking like a, a QuickBooks type of software or other types of software this is not typically something that you can do so that's great that pulled it pulled it together here so again this is another thing that we could do within zero to really make our internal reports so that's something you'd want to do most likely for the external reports and then leave it alone i, th I would think for the internal report so i won't save it right now we'll, we'll probably take a look at it again when we do the external reports but that's really nice so it's not perfect yet our reports aren't perfect because we still have labels like the equity section here and whatnot but that's pretty nice that uh, that we can do that so now we have these two items. Again, those are gonna tie out to our worksheet over here. Everything, everything looks fairly straightforward, our worksheet over here. So um, that's gonna be it for now. Let's get out of here.